as I was talking about in the Pittsburgh Steelers preview video with that organization, some of that holds true for the Baltimore Ravens as well. They are certainly one of the best, most well-run organizations in the NFL. I don't think anybody really disputes that or really, really questions that. And you can point to them as being one of those examples of you want to do things like them. And on the surface, it's hard to disagree with that. That's a team that's pretty consistently in the mix. They've won a couple of Super Bowls. I get it, right? Like, they look like the type of organization you want to pattern yourself after. Draft and develop your own talent, da-da-da. But then I come back and I say, you know, yeah, this is a team that hasn't been to the Super Bowl in over a decade. In that time, the Eagles have been to two and won one of them. The Chiefs have been to three and won two of them. You know, we keep holding up teams like and organizations like the Steelers and Raiders as like a template to follow. But at the end of the day, they're not winning championships <laughs> with the propensity of frequency of other teams. So maybe we should stop pumping them up quite so much. Anyways. Looking at this Ravens team in 2022, I think I think actually is a pretty good example of that. Uh, this is a team that saw Lamar Jackson go down late in the year in the Denver game and was out the rest of the season, uh, but still found a way to kind of hang on there at the end, win enough games, finish tight ten and seven, get to the playoffs, and behind Tyler Huntley, get relatively close to knocking off the Bengals in the wild card round, but they did it right and. You could say all of this and all of that. They won 10 games, sure, but they still didn't win the division. They didn't win a playoff game. So what? I'm just saying, right? Like, so what? <laughs> um, so, you know, there was a lot of drama in the offseason talking about Lamar Jackson and what's going to happen with him. What's his contract situation going to look like? That ultimately resolved itself. And... You know, now you wonder, like, how are they going to build around him? What's he going to do to actually stay healthy and stay on the field? What's he going to do to improve as a passer? They're all valid, legitimate questions. And it's interesting for a team like the Ravens, in recent years, they've tried to try to piecemeal the wide receiver position a little bit by bringing in guys like Deshaun Jackson and Sammy Watkins and so forth, like bringing in guys closer to the end of the rope, closer to the end of their career. And they did that again this offseason with a couple of guys like Odell Beckham Jr. and Nelson Aguilar. And I understand the thought of Odell Beckham Jr. playing with Lamar Jackson is fantastic, right? You're like, oh, it's OBJ. Like, this is the dynamic playmaking difference maker that this Ravens offense needed so badly. Until you realize that it's been many years now since Odell Beckham Jr.'s had a truly great season. And the thought of what you think he could be or should be is much higher and vastly different than the reality of what he probably is at this point. Now, could he certainly bring something to the Ravens in the passing game? I would expect yes. He'll be motivated for sure, but got to temper some expectations with him. This is not like 2014 through 2016 Odo Beckham Jr. It's just not. Um, they also address wide receiver in the draft. So you talk about Beckham Jr. You talk about Aguilar. Now they go into the draft a couple years after draft of Rashad Bateman in round one. They draft Zay Flowers from Boston College in round one. And I love this selection. Like, this is a guy, his skill set in the slot, he will be a fantastic option, a fantastic weapon for Lamar Jackson. If, to me, if Zay Flowers doesn't become a multiple-time 1,000-yard-plus receiver in the NFL, it's because something went wrong with the Ravens passing game, specifically Lamar Jackson. So, you know, they certainly went and tried to address the lack of talent and depth that the pass-catching positions will have to see now in 2023, whether that investment is going to pay off. In terms of the strengths of this Ravens roster in 2023, you know, we know that this is going to be an elite running team and no reason that should change this year. Doesn't really matter the backs that they have. You know they're going to be able to run the ball. And when you've got Lamar Jackson... As long as he can stay healthy, you know you're really going to be able to run the ball. That's not the problem for them. Same thing with their run defense. Like, it, the problem with the Ravens has nothing to do with the running game. They can run the ball and they can stop the run. They were top three in the league in yards allowed last year. And I don't see a ton of reason why that's going to change. 
Um, and then you look at their linebacking core, you know, and you look at Roquan and Patrick Queen in the middle, like it's pretty good tandem inside. And then Owe and Ojabo on the outside. You know, I wonder how they're going to do as edge rushers in 2023, but I really like the talent in this linebacking core. Then they drafted somebody like a Trenton Simpson in the third round to be able to get him there. Like, that's a really good unit. Um, but the big problems to me with the Ravens are all about the passing game on both sides of the ball. Their secondary was 26 in passing yards allowed last year. Well, and where did they really get better, right? Their notable moves in free agency were wide receivers. Their first two picks in the draft were a wide receiver and a linebacker. Where did their secondary get better? I don't really like that unit for them on their defense right now. Then I look at the receiving core. We know Mark Andrews is a legit, certified, validated stud at tight end, but what else do they have? As I talked about a couple of moments ago, Odell Beckham Jr. now is more of an illusion or a dream of what you think he could be from several years ago versus the reality of what he actually is. What do they reasonably expect from a Rashad Bateman? You know, what's Zay Flowers going to do as he transitions to the NFL? You know, are you going to get anything out of Nelson Aguilar? Like, these are legit questions you know, for that receiving unit. I expect it to be better, but still could certainly be a question mark for this team. And what's crazy to me is as much of a Lamar Jackson fan as I've been over the years, you remember I had a first-round draft grade on going into the 2018 draft. You know, I've, I've advocated and defended for him certainly at times. I realize he's a former league MVP and legitimately so, but he got a huge contract and he's got to play better. That's what's crazy about it. He's a legit former league MVP. He deserved the money that he got. And yet there's this void there of shit that he's got to get better at in the passing game. The talent around him needs to get better too, right? So you can't just put it on Lamar, but he still has to get better. And he's going into year six in his career now. Now's the time to kind of either put up or shut up. Like, are you just going to be, you know, that run first type of quarterback? Or are you going to be able to expand your arsenal as a pocket passer? It's legit to question that after five years. It really is. And it's crazy to me. Um, and it's a question for the Ravens right now, right? And you could say, well, they need to get better weapons around them. Well, if you believe they got better weapons around them now, which I believe they do, then... There's not a lot of excuse left for Lamar. Uh, when you look at this team, I look at their schedule, and I say, hey, that early part of the season is going to tell a lot about this group, right? You look at the first six weeks in their schedule, they host Houston in week one, then they got to go to Cincinnati, host Indianapolis, go to Cleveland, go to Pittsburgh, go to Tennessee. So four of the first six are on the road. You know, they've got three divisional games mixed in there. So if you're the Ravens and you come out of that six-game stretch to start the season and you say, hey, we're 4-2 and two and we're 2-1 and one in the division, that's a really good start. They can certainly do better than that. You know, but let's just say for argument's sake, let's say you believe they're going to beat Houston, lose to Cincinnati on the road, beat Indy, beat Cleveland, lose to Pittsburgh, beat Tennessee. 4-2, and two, there you go. 2-1 and one in the division. Certainly feasible and reasonable. Weeks 11 and 12, they host the Bengals, and then they got to go to the Chargers, a couple of playoff teams from last year they got to do well against. And for the Ravens, like the end of the season doesn't get a whole lot better there in terms of the schedule. Week 16, they got to go all the way to San Francisco, then come back for their last two games hosting the Dolphins and hosting the Steelers. And it's that stretch in those last few weeks that has me not quite buying into this team being the, able to win this division. I think the Ravens are like a 10-win team this year. They'll finish second in the division, but I just can't put them past the Bengals. And I frankly also wouldn't be surprised to see the Steelers jump past the Ravens if things go well for Pittsburgh this year.